It's difficult to put a number of how many times we've looked up into the night sky and been dazzled by the endless points of lights before our eyes. Some of us have been inspired to try and capture a small portion of the magic and majesty that hangs above our heads each night. But where do we begin? What's up guys and gals, Raf here from BNC Camera, and in this episode we'll be going over night sky photography. Let's go ahead and go over some of the tools you'll need. Of course a camera designed with low light functionality in mind. It should shoot in RAW, have a wide native ISO range, and come equipped with bulb mode. Next up after the camera, you're going to want a sturdy tripod. Often you'll be using long exposures to pull light from the far reaches of the cosmos, and even a micro bump will blur your image. After that, you're going to want a remote, a wired wireless shutter release, or a Bluetooth application via your smartphone. Something to snap the picture other than your finger on the shutter button. This will help avoid shaking the camera causing that blur that we had discussed earlier. Alrighty, with all the essentials out of the way, the next thing you want to do is choose something specific that you'd like to photograph. I know that's a little tough given the enormity of your subject, but you've got to start somewhere. It's a good idea to research the moon's movement patterns, or its phases, in observable constellations. There is a whole bunch of phone apps and star trackers that'll help you out in that process. If you want to capture constellations, you're going to want a clear night sky. Having a bright moon will only hinder and overexpose your photographs. Another big factor that's going to come into play is weather. You'll want a clear night sky with high visibility and a spot with minimal light pollution. If you're living in a big city, you might want to take a little road trip to somewhere a bit more rural. Okay, let's backtrack a bit and talk about the moon phases and the pros and cons with shooting for each. First up, let's talk about the wide open sky of a new moon. The fainter light of this moon phase allows those other night sky attributes to really shine. But the other side of the low light coin is, your camera settings may be pushed to their extremes. Higher ISOs and longer exposures will be required to compensate for the new moon's dim light. On the opposite end of that spectrum, we'll go ahead and talk about the full moon. When you really want the moon to be the focus of your photography, there is no better time. You'll be able to get proper exposure with relative ease due to the full moon's overpowering light. In this instance, focusing on the moon and dialing up your f-stop will be just fine to capture every little detail and crater. Just keep in mind that its overbearing radiance in the sky will blot out the smaller stars lingering overhead. And if you're in between phases, you'll find yourself in a quarter or crescent moon. Quarter or crescent moon phases give you the best of both worlds. If you place the moon behind you during the phase, you can use it to illuminate the foreground of your shot. When shooting west, aim for an early night shoot. The moon will hang low in the sky, giving off dramatic vividness. Shooting in the east direction, plan for an early morning shoot. The moon is low in the west and will provide the best results. With moon phases out of the way, let's go ahead and discuss stars and how you're going to capture the cosmos. First, of course, is picking your location. As mentioned before, it's best to travel at least 50 miles away from the city's lights. If you can get to higher altitudes, do so. High above sea level, the air is thinner, which allows for crisper, more detailed photographs. Second is getting your tripod in position. Make sure it's firmly on the ground with the legs locking mechanism tightened. Third, get creative. It's time to frame your shot and you have all the gear at your fingertips and the entire sky to choose from. Make sure you're being true to yourself and you're helping others see the night sky the way you see it. And that is a wrap for this one. Hopefully these tips will help be your guiding star to take amazing night sky photography. There are so many things you can do with night sky photography, but when you're out there, be sure to also take the time to simply enjoy the moment. Thank you so much for tuning in. Raf from BNC Camera, signing off.